Welcome to our final midweek Lenten service as we commemorate the events of Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. I'm Pastor Ron Ulrich from Faith UCC. And I'm Pastor Sue Ulrich from Locust Grove UCC. Anyone who knows me well knows that I like many of the books written by author and pastor Max Licato. I really like what he has written about Monday or Holy Thursday in his book, Just Like Jesus. So I'm going to base some of what I say today on this book and some on my research over the years. It probably would not be anything new for Jesus and the disciples to share a Passover meal together. It was probably something they looked forward to doing. As they would have entered into that upper room that night, there probably would have been a towel and a basin on the floor. This would have been put there for a servant to wash their feet, only there was no servant to do it. The roads were dusty and their feet needed to be washed before they reclined at the table. And although the disciples had seen, probably, the towel and the basin, no one did anything about it except Jesus. He took off his outer garment and wrapped a towel around his waist, and he began to wash their feet and dry them with this towel. This had to be a little shocking for them to see Jesus do this. But like our passage from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, tells us, he loved his disciples to the end. And this was one way that he showed his love to them. I have read that this task of washing feet was reserved for not just any servant in the household, but the lowest servant. And yet, Jesus does what that servant would have done. Imagine what that might have been like for those disciples to see their beloved teacher and master doing what he was doing washing their dirty feet. It must have been embarrassing and uncomfortable for them. So it is no surprise that Peter protests. While the others might have kept their thoughts to themselves, well, that was not exactly Peter's nature. He was not known for doing that. He just had to express what he was thinking and feeling. To him, this just wasn't right. So he protests until Jesus tells him that if he does not wash his feet, he cannot be his disciple. And then in good old Peter fashion, he goes overboard and wants all of him washed. Max recalls noticing something when he read this passage that surprised him. He said that he tried to find a version of the Bible that said that Jesus washed everyone's feet but Judas Iscariot, but he couldn't find one. So knowing, as our passage tells him, knowing that Judas was about to betray him, he still washed his feet. In fact, Max points out that Jesus washed all of the disciples' feet knowing what they would do the next day, knowing that they would desert him in the Garden of Gethsemane after his arrest, and that Peter would deny knowing him three times. And Max points out that Jesus gave them a gift. For in the morning, the disciples would bury their head in shame and look down at their feet in disgust. He writes, And when they do... He wants them to remember how his knees knelt before them, and he washed their feet. Jesus wants them to feel the love he has for them. I realize that washing someone's feet was a common thing in that society. You would wash your own feet, or, or a servant would wash your feet when you entered someone's house. But it is a very humbling thing to have someone do this for you. And it is also very humbling to be the one doing the washing. I know it has always been that way for me when I have participated 
in a, in a foot washing ceremony. Jesus did something that was so special here for the disciples, and he modeled for them humility and love and servanthood in such a powerful way. Granted, we don't do this often or even at all, but I think sometimes perhaps we should because it is very powerful and it tends to change and enrich our relationships with one another. Jesus showed his love for his disciples. And when we read this passage, we need to remember the love he has for us too. Because if we are honest, we also have denied knowing him by our actions or by the things we have said and not said. And Jesus wants us to know that we are loved too and that we are called to follow his example and wash one another's feet. It is very humbling to have someone wash your feet or your hands, especially someone we might not be getting along with. And when they take your feet or your hands into their hands, we feel a humbling and grace we never felt before. And we remember that we are all brothers and sisters in Christ's body, called to love and respect one another, called to follow his example. As we move into, in a few minutes, reading in the Gospel of John, chapters 18 and 19, about Jesus' arrest, trial, crucifixion, and burial, which is part of our midweek Lenten service this week, imagine that you are there with all of the others, among the people who are a part of this passage. Imagine how, how you might be feeling and what you would do if you had, in fact, been there. If you were there in the garden as Jesus was being arrested, how would you take that? Would you be angry, sad, heartbroken, confused, terrified? Would you run away, be ready to fight, speak out, or remain silent. If you were with Peter and with the others in the courtyard of the high priest while Jesus was being questioned, how might you have reacted? Would you have attempted to hide your connection to Jesus as Jesus was being interrogated and then led off to Governor Pilate's headquarters? Would you have been able to admit that you were one of Jesus' followers, even if that could have led to your own being beaten or crucified, or at the very least, being treated meanly by many other people? Or would you have tried to stay hidden in the shadows, denying your association with Jesus? If you were in the crowd when Pilate stepped outside, and asked what to do with Jesus, would you have been able to yell out, release him? Or would you have joined the rest, following the coaching of the religious leaders, shouting, crucify him? Could you have called for Jesus' release, even if every other person said that he should be crucified? And when Jesus was carrying his cross to the place where he would die, would you have wanted to go along? 
Would you have been able to watch helplessly as they nailed him to a cross, as they lifted him up and left him to die? Just a handful of women and one male disciple are there as he breathes his last. Would you have been among them? I find it difficult to imagine what it was like to live in that world. In some ways, it seems to have been so much more violent. Yet, how many people today, in our inner cities, in poorer countries, experience such violence each and every day? Perhaps the fears that you and I have, although not, not nearly as great, are a window into the fears that many today and at the time when Jesus walked among us experienced as commonplace. No doubt, you and I would have been just as afraid as the rest of them. So the way Jesus stood up to his oppressors, not backing down, even forgiving and loving them, is so amazing. Now imagine this. Imagine if Jesus were walking among us today, hearing as people are being abused and mistreated and bullied and discriminated against and sold as property. Imagine how Jesus, bold and loving Jesus, Imagine how he would react. And consider this. Jesus is living in you and me through the presence of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is able to speak and to act and to respond through you and me. How often have you and I allowed the power, the boldness, the great love of Jesus to burst forth in our words and in our actions. Jesus died that day, but he is alive and among us and within us today. His heart is just as loving. His power is just as great. How amazing it is when you and I Reveal Jesus' great love and power in our words and in our actions. I wonder if you can imagine that. And now will you join us in singing the song printed on our sheet? Were you there? Were you there when he humbly washed their feet? Were you there when he humbly washed their feet? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when he humbly washed their feet? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you Crucified my Lord. Oh, 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 sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble. See? 